Today I'm sewing and sharing a Mimi G pattern. This is Simplicity 8889. I'm sewing View A the top. This top has a collar, a high-low hem, as well as concealed buttons down the front. You can find this pattern at your local fabric store and online. I've left a link for you below so you can check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew along with me. So grab that pattern, cut out your fabric, mark your dots and notches, and let's get started. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of one neckband piece and one collar piece. Also apply interfacing to the wrong side of both of the vertical front edges of both of your front bodice pieces. The widths of these interfacings are marked on your pattern piece. I've taken the top of my pocket to my ironing board and I folded down that top raw edge to the wrong side of the fabric by a quarter of an inch. And then I flipped the pocket over and I folded and pressed that top edge of the pocket to the right side by an additional one inch. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and with a 5 8 inch seam allowance starting at the top fold, I'm going to sew down the side edge, pivoting at the bottom, and then back up the opposite side. Now that our pocket is stitched, we can trim these corners to reduce the bulk. I'm going to trim from the side edge right across the top of this quarter inch flap, and then trim from the top fold to the top of the quarter inch flap leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance. And do that on both sides. And then you can also trim those corners. Now turn the top of your pocket right side out, poking out your corners, and give the top of your pocket a good press as well as pressing the side and bottom edges of your pocket to the wrong side right along your stitching line. Now we're going to take this pocket back to our machine and edge stitch close to the bottom of that top fold of our pocket from one side of the pocket all the way across to the other. There are dots on your left front pattern piece that indicate where your pocket is going to be placed. I've transferred these markings onto my fabric just using pins. Now I'm going to align the top of my pocket with those dots and pin in place along the side and bottom edges. Now that my pocket is pinned in place, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and edge stitch from the top all along the bottom and back up the other side, back stitching at both top edges to secure. Now we're going to start working on the pleat at the very top of our back bodice piece. At the top of your back bodice pattern piece, you have lines indicating where we're going to be creating this pleat. You have one solid line with an arrow pointing toward a dotted line. On our fabric, we're going to fold along the solid line and then carry that fabric over to the dotted line and pin in place. So here's the top of my back bodice. My fabric is right side up and I've marked with notches both the dotted lines and the solid lines. I'm going to carry that material from one notch to the other and pin in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, carrying the fabric from one inner notch to the outer notch. Now that I have my pleat in place, I'm going to baste it with about a half inch seam allowance. Now grab your yoke piece and place the bottom of the yoke right sides together with the top of your back bodice. Match your notches and pin in place. Sew your yoke to the top of the back bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams either with your serger or a zigzag stitch. Once that seam is finished, press the seam up toward the yoke. Now place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together at the shoulder seams and pin in place. Sew your shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish your seams. Here's the inside of my back bodice piece. Before I put right sides together with the front bodice pieces and sew our side seams, I want to finish the raw edges of the side seam from the underarm seam to about the middle of the bottom curve. I'm going to finish the raw edges this way on both sides of the back piece, as well as for my front bodice pieces in the same way from the underarm seam to about the center of the curve.
Now I'm going to place my front and back bodice pieces right sides together. And I'm going to pin the side seams together from the underarm seam to the large dot marked on my pattern piece. And I'm going to do this on both sides. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew from the underarm seam to the large dot, back stitching at the large dot to secure. Sewing with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Take your right front bodice piece to your ironing board and fold back that facing to the right side, right along the edge of that interfacing. At the bottom center edge of your right front bodice pattern piece, you have a line indicating your stitching line. I've marked the bottom edge of that stitching line here with a notch. And I'm going to take this bottom edge of my bodice to the sewing machine and sew from this folded edge of the interfacing with a 5 8 inch seam allowance to that stitching line and then pivot my stitching and sew right down to the notch that I marked onto my fabric. Now that we have our bottom corner sewn, we're going to clip into this section, leaving about a quarter inch of fabric on both sides of the stitching. And then also clip into that corner to the tip of the stitching and not beyond. I'm also going to clip the outer corner as well. Now we can turn this facing right side out and poke out that bottom corner. Turn the facing to the inside of the garment and give it a really good press. And then we're going to baste close to this raw edge of the interfacing on the inside of the garment from the top to the bottom of this interface section. Now still working with our right front bodice piece, we're going to prepare to sew our buttonholes. Using your buttonhole pattern piece, line up the edge of your pattern piece with the facing edge of your bodice. Mark your buttonholes in your preferred method. I'm just going to use pins. Now with my buttonhole placements marked, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew all five buttonholes. So now I've sewn all of my buttonholes and opened them up. And now once again, we're going to turn this facing to the right side, folding it right along that line where the interfacing ends. And then at this bottom section where we clipped into that corner, we're going to baste from this inner edge of the facing to that corner that we clipped to. For our left front bodice piece, we're going to fold that interfaced section to the wrong side of the garment, right along that inner edge of the interfacing, and give that a good press. Then we're going to take it to our sewing machine and baste close to this raw edge from the bottom to the top of the garment. Now that I have that interface section for the left front piece basted in place, I'm going to fold it so that it's right sides together with the bodice. Again, folding it right along that edge of that interfacing and then baste this bottom section in place. Place your front and back facing pieces right sides together and pin the edges from the top to the large dots that you transferred from your pattern piece. Now sew your facings together from the top to the large dot back stitching to secure. I've gone ahead and pressed open these seams that we just sewed. Now I'm going to take it to my serger and serge the entire inner unnotched edge of the facing from one side all the way to the other. You can use a serger, a zigzag stitch, or a pinking shears. Now we can start attaching the facing to the bottom of the bodice all the way around the bottom edges. With these front bodice basted sections still basted in place and folded to the right side of the garment, place one edge of your facing on top and begin pinning in place. Now we're going to sew the facing to the bottom of the bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way across. At these bottom sections where the bodice turns upward and meets the side seam, we're going to sew that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance to the large dot from your pattern piece which should align with the end of our stitching when we stitched those partial seams earlier. 
We're going to sew to that large dot, backstitching to secure, and then moving those seam allowances on both sides of the garment out of the way, we're going to start a new set of stitches at the large dot on the other side, backstitching to secure, and then continuing with that 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance, starting and stopping our stitching in the same way at the other large dot on the other side of the bodice. Now that we have our facing sewn to the bottom of the bodice all the way around, we're going to trim the seam allowance by half. Also trim both of your outer bottom corners so that we can get a nice point here when we turn the facing right side out. Now we're ready to understitch the facing. Opening that facing out flat and pressing that seam allowance down toward the facing we're going to sew the seam allowance to the facing about an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line and all the way around. As you approach your rounded corners, your presser foot may not let you get all the way into that slitted area, so just understitch as far as you can. And then we can turn our facing to the inside of the garment, all around the bottom edges of the front and back bodice, and give all those seams a really good press. And for the bottom of the bodice on both sides, you'll also be turning your facings right side out, and poking out those bottom edges. Now that I have that facing turned to the inside of the garment and everything is given a really nice press, I'm ready to stitch this facing down to the front bodice, following the same stitching line that we used earlier to sew that bottom edge of this corner. I'm going to follow that vertical stitching line from the bottom to the top of this facing. And for the right front bodice piece, with that facing turned to the wrong side of the garment, we're going to edge stitch close to that inner fold from top to bottom as well. Now that I have the left front facing edge stitched in place and the right front facing stitched along that stitching line, I've gone ahead and pressed that buttonhole flap toward the rest of the facing so that the edge of the buttonhole flap is one eighth of an inch to the inside of the remainder of the facing. In other words, the center front extends an eighth of an inch beyond our buttonhole flap. Now using a needle and thread, I'm going to sew the bottom edge of this buttonhole flap to the main bodice all along this bottom edge. And then at the top of that buttonhole flap, I'm going to baste it in place right at the center front of that neckline. Now for the facing on the inside of the garment, we're going to pin it in place to the bodice all the way around the bottom edges. as well as these curved side edges. And then using a one and a half inch seam allowance, you're going to sew the top edge of the facing to the bodice all the way around. Here's the neckline of my bodice opened out. Grab your interface neckband piece and place it right sides together with your neckline matching your notches and small dots. The small dots should align with your shoulder seams. The edges of the collar should extend 3 eighths of an inch beyond the edges of the neckline. Now we're going to sew the neckband to the neckline with a 3 8 inch seam allowance from side to side. Now we want to trim that seam and then clip into the curves to the stitching line but not beyond. Press your seam up toward the neckband. Now grab your collar pieces and place them right sides together 
and pin the side and top edges. Sew your side and top edges with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to trim our seam allowances and clip those outer corners. And then we're going to understitch. Open out the two pieces of the collar. You're going to stitch the seam allowance to the uninterfaced collar piece about an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line. Your presser foot won't allow you to understitch all the way to the pointed corner, so just go as far as you can. Now we can turn this collar right side out, poking out those corners, and give this collar piece a really good press. Now that the collar is turned out and pressed, we're going to baste the raw edges together. I'm just going to use the longest stitch on my machine and use about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now place the uninterfaced side of your collar right sides together with your neckband. Match your dots and notches and pin in place. Then you can take it to your sewing machine and baste the collar to the neckband. I've taken my remaining neckband piece to the ironing board and pressed up the bottom single notched edge to the wrong side by 3 eighths of an inch all the way across. Now I'm going to place it right sides together with the other neckband piece so that the collar is sandwiched in between. Match your notches and pin in place. And then sew your neckbands together through all thicknesses with a 3 8 inch seam allowance from one bottom edge to the other. And then we can trim that seam allowance by about half. Turn your neckband right side out. And then give that top neckband seam a really good press. Now I'm going to take that bottom pressed edge of the inside neckband and place it right over the neckline stitching line so that it just covers those stitches and pin in place. Now that I have that pinned, I'm gonna stitch from the outside of my garment, stitching in the ditch of that original neckband seam, periodically checking underneath to make sure that I am catching that folded edge of the neckband on the inside. To start working on the sleeves, we're going to sew basting stitches all around the top of the sleeves, from notch to notch. Make sure to leave thread tails on both sides so that you can pull them to ease the sleeve into both of the arm size. Do this for both sleeves. Fold your sleeve right sides together matching the short edges and pin in place. Do this for both sleeves and sew these seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams. The total hem for the bottom of the sleeves is one and a quarter inches. I've taken it to my ironing board and I've folded up that bottom raw edge to the inside by a quarter of an inch all the way around. Then you're going to turn it once more to the inside by an additional one inch and give that a good press all the way across. Do this hem for the bottom of both sleeves, then take it to your sewing machine and edge stitch close to that inner fold all around the bottom of both sleeves. Now we can attach our sleeves to the bodice. Place your sleeve and your bodice right sides together matching the underarm seams and pin in place. Continue pinning from your underarm seam to the double notches, as well as to the single notches. Then you can start pulling the basting stitches at the top of your sleeve so that the sleeve fits into the arm side. As you're pulling those basting stitches, keep in mind that we're not trying to form any gathers here. We just want to ease the sleeve into the arm side. So any gathering that happens needs to stay within the seam allowance. And when we go to sew it, make sure that you don't catch any puckers as you sew. Once you've eased that sleeve cap and it's now the same size as the arm side, go ahead and pin in place. Do this to insert both sleeves. And then sew both of those sleeves in place with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then finish those seams in your preferred method. <laughs> 
On your neckband pattern piece, you have a line indicating where we're going to be sewing a buttonhole into the neckband. Take your right bodice piece to your sewing machine. According to that marking on your pattern piece, go ahead and sew a horizontal buttonhole in place. Here is my front left bodice piece. I've gone ahead and used pins to mark where I want my buttons to be placed, using the buttonhole guide pattern piece I used earlier to sew the buttonholes. And now I'm going to sew my buttons in place. Give everything a nice final press and you're all done with your top. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing tutorials and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.